akọ tabi ogbon lati iwe ise apostoli ori ketala so we are going to look at verse 44 to 52 our brother femi you know what you're going to do please bring oriola beside here bring debari beside brother shell so that they can concentrate yeah oriola move move come then bring debari beside um brother shell or else they won't hear the word and they won't allow the people around them to hear the word hallelujah so that we can concentrate so let's go to the bible acts chapter 13 44 to to 52 and my message today will be focusing on there are three questions we are going to answer let them give us the scripture uh, but before they give us the scripture let me just tell you briefly today we are going to be talking about you know the attack of envious people why the attack and how to handle them uh you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you you know, 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 you you know, you know, you know, you you know, 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 you Acts chapter 13, thank you, from verse 44 to verse 52. I'll take verse 44, you take 45, I'll take 46 until we'll get to 52. Rise up on your feet, let's honor God's word. After the count of three, I want to read one, two, three. And the next Sabbath day, let me read verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Now you take verse 45, verse 45. The whole city. Now let's go. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. I read verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you you judge yourselves you, you judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life lo with thorn to the gentiles because you didn't accept it verse 47 let's go for so had the lord commanded us i didn't hear you saying i have said thee to be a light of the gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth now, I read 48, and when the Gentiles, Gentiles had this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Let's read 49 together. Let's have 49 together. Let's go. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. I read verse 50, the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. Now you read verse 51, let's go. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium. Now, let's read 52 together before we sit. Let's go. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy, Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you again. Speak to our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats in his presence. Hallelujah. We we'll bless the Lord again for today's uh, message that will be coming forth. God has prepared the word already. His servant here, here to deliver it. You just make sure that your heart is ready to receive now if you look at the summary of what we read you will see that it, they envied paul and silas uh, and barnabas not because of money some people used to think that it is when people envy you is because you have money some think they, they envy me because uh, of uh, the kind of clothes i wore no no if you look at the scripture here you will see that because paul and barnabas preached the first day at the synagogue 
The second meeting they had, the Bible says the whole city, got, almost the whole city. All, imagine for, this, for people to say, almost the whole Lebanon gathered to come and hear Paul and Barnabas preaching. You know, and the Jews saw it, they, they were, they, the Bible says they envied them because of what they saw. And they started to speak against them and to blaspheme. Praise the Lord. You know, I took my dictionary to go through black, blaspheming. To blaspheme a person is to disrespect a person. To say things to disregard him. You know, to blaspheme is to disrespect, disregard. Say things to pull somebody down. That was what they were doing. And the Bible says they were contradicting what they were preaching, which means everything Paul and um, Barnabas was preaching, they were, they were speaking against. Now, what's our lesson? We have three lessons before I close. Lesson one, anytime you yield yourself to God to use you fulfill his will, pay attention, the devil will steer up his agents against you to, to try to speak against you. Let me come again. Anytime you yield yourself to God, to use you fulfill his will. The devil will steer up his agents against you. Satan if against you to speak against you. Now listen, that's one of the reasons for envy. You know what? Every single time you say, I will, I will lay myself down for God to use me. I know God has a lot of things he's doing on that. Now, he ministers to people that are unsaved. Now, at, apart from people that are unsaved, he ministers even to the saved. For instance, there are people that pick up charity ministry that God put in their hearts to bless the less privileged. There are people that God put in their hearts to bless people. Now, anytime you say, Lord, this is me, I'm available, use me for your will. You, you surrender yourself for God to use you. You know what? The devil will always be angry, especially if that purpose of God becomes successful in your hands. Hello, am I communicating? Even if it's a business that God put in your heart to start, I always tell people, now I'm a pastor. In, now, I'm a pastor in church. You may be a pastor in your business place. It may be through your business that people are coming to God. Am I communicating? So, you are a minister in that place. So, every single time that you make yourself available for God to do great things in your hands, expect it, whether you like it or not. The devil will steer up his own agents too to come and begin to speak against you. They begin to, I've, I've had cases where some people st stood up because they saw that somebody's business was booming. Somebody was progressing. They just come up and begin to say terrible things against them. Now, it is the agent of the devil. You know why? The devil is always afraid of the people that makes themselves available for God to use them. So, he steers up his agents. I wrote here, envy, hear me, is a fruit of the flesh. A proof that a person is still under the control of Satan. That's why if you see anybody that manifests envy, it's a clear sign. Envy is a proof of the, it's a, it's a, it's a what? It's a proof, if, sorry, fruit of the flesh. It's a fruit of the flesh. It's a clear sign that that person that the devil is using us at that time has not really put his flesh under subjection. Praise the Lord. That's why you see that there could be envy even in church. It's a clear sign that that person has not submitted his flesh totally to God. I will show you some things as we go on. But understand it. Every time you yield yourself to do an extraordinary thing in the hands of God, people envy you. People want to hate you. Some people want to jealous you. So don't see it as a, you know, some people see it as a, 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 a I've had people say it, that maybe it's a, it's a kind of destiny I have. And people just used to hate me. No. People will hate you anytime you make yourself available to do the will of God. Hello? That I'm going to do the will of God. If you're alone, anytime you say, I'm going to do the will of God. If you're alone, running my shit, people will hate you. Do you know that the will of God, hear me, mean, can be as small as you saying, I am always going to dress nice to represent God well. It could be, do you know that? That the will of God could be as small as that. Do you know that you deciding to dress well, to appear well, can make some people to hate you? 
and your blessing well appearing well may be that you just said no I'm a born again Christian I will not dress anyhow I will not allow anybody to make mockery of my God through me somebody will hate you for it you know why the devil is after anybody that surrend surrenders himself to be used of God I remember there was a time I belonged to this fellowship many of ministers of God anytime we had meeting they want to have a, a end of the year party. They want to have special celebration. They will call us together. What do we? What are we going to do at this party that we want to have? How do we get food to cook? And I will ask, okay, what do you want to do? We are about fifty ministers, so now and we now be looking for rice, half bag of rice. How do we get half bag of rice? So by faith, me, I will just lift up my hand and I will say, you know what? I will give you a bag of rice. As some we say, thank God for your life, sir. Praise God, Pastor Falabi. Hey, thank God for you. But do you know that I was doing it not because I have it? Oh. I was doing it because me, I just feel that how can half bag of rice be, be a problem in the midst of ministers of the gospel? So when I come back home at times, I would go to, there's a woman beside our house, those days, an affair. The wife, the wife, you know, they call them Eleha. So I'll go to her. She loves me so much. She loves me. She respects me. She will give me the half bag. I will go and drop it in the fellowship. Nobody know how I got it. Then some pastors began to gather together. Can you see? Pastor Afolabi, ah, Uliwanu Lo is using our destiny. That's why he's always giving us rice. I didn't hear. I didn't know. But me, I was doing it out of joy. And when I get home, I'll be praying, Lord, please bless me. At times, it, it took me one month before I would be able to balance the, the Eleha. Praise the Lord. So one day, somebody now told me this thing. The pastor of Alabi, when I decided they wanted to have a party again, I raised my hand, all of them turned to me. Ah. Again, you know? So again, yeah, yeah, milenu. But to me, I was saying, ah, I want to be But one of them now came and said, Pastor, I don't know. That again, it's not that they are happy. They say you are using their destiny. Ah. I said to do what? They say you are using their destiny to shine. I said shine where? As at the time they were talking, our church was at the backyard. You need to climb soccer way to get to church. As at the time they were coming, I didn't have a car. They were talking, I didn't have a car. But I'm just the kind of a person, I love to dress well, you know. As at that time, I had an office of my own. If you come to my office, compute, I, I arranged my office. So, I got angry. I've given them the right, so I got angry. I now decided I won't attend the fellowship again. So, they sent a group of ministers, about five of them, to come and talk to me. So, as they came, they said, Pastor, we heard that you have heard. I said, yes. I said, I'm disappointed. I'm only doing this for God. Because the Bible said, let brotherly love continue. You know what they said, Pastor, don't listen to them. Don't listen. You know what now touched me that made me to say, I won't go back to that fellowship. As they were going, one of the eldest among them now said, Pastor, am I being continue wanting sonny pay in sugar to budget in on she? Ah. So definitely, and you know that go. Am I communicating? Anytime you make yourself available, listen. To fulfill the purpose of God, the devil will raise his agents against you. Understand that clearly. Because the devil does not want anybody to do the will of God. Anytime you yield yourself to God to use you, fulfill his will, the devil will stir up his agents against you to speak against you. And I said, envy is the fruit of the flesh. A proof that a person is still under the control of Satan. Under the control of Satan. Now, I have a question here. It's still under lesson one. I want to ask, when we talk about agents of Satan, agents of Satan, who are agents of Satan? Who are agents of Satan? Listen, this is my definition. An agent of Satan is whoever, whoever makes his or herself open to be used by the devil. An agent of Satan is anyone, whoever makes his or herself open. I use the word vulnerable here, but it may be too hard for some. So I bracket as anyone that makes himself open. Listen, the person could even be a bishop, could be a reverend, 
could be a sister. Any can it about it, Joe Warele, Fun Satani Latile Yalu. In a shell. How do I know this? In Matthew chapter 16. Look at what Jesus said about Peter. Matthew 16, 23. Show us. Matthew 16, 23. Matthew 16, verse 23. You know why I have to tell you this? Because some of you be saying, eh, eh, but the people that are writing against me are not agents of the devil. We're in the same church. Look at this. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, the same Peter, get thee behind me. What? Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou severest not the things that are of God, but those things. Now, if you read from the early part, this, this same Peter that Jesus called Satan was the same Peter that Jesus said, Ah, Peter, this thing that you have said, it is not flesh and blood that I reveal to you. It is the spirit of God. It is God that revealed to you. You shall be Peter, the rock. Upon you I shall build my church. Peter, as at that time, made himself available for God to use. But as they were going, Jesus was talking about, I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to be killed. I'll be hanged on the cross. And after I die, I'll be buried. Peter said, no, stop saying that. You will not die. You will not. Stop saying that. And Jesus turned and said, ah, me should lay you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan is inside this man. Get out, Satan. So, agents of the devil, listen, are uh, whoever makes themselves available to be used of the devil. I wrote here, he or she may not be a witch or a wizard. He or she may not be a witch or a wizard or even an occultist. He may even be a tongue-speaking Christian or a minister. He may even be a tongue-speaking Christian. But you are shocked. Why? Why? Because he or she has made himself available for Satan to be used. And don't forget, it is any time you yield yourself for the purpose of God. So, why do you have people envying you? It's because you are yielding yourself to the purpose of God. You may not know that you are yielding yourself. The things you are doing are the things that please God. You are yielding yourself. And as long as you are doing that, Ah, in the, in the place where our school is. They, they, some people don't like us there. If you see how them, they will gather, they will gather. Who, who knows, who knows, who knows what they are doing? Taliban, rubbish, don't she? Church, school, in one run. Tell one more, John, one more, Ah. When I heard it, I laughed. There are several members in the church there that are not paying one naira. They're in that school. We gave them scholarships. But they, they will never, will I, will I even need to go and explain? Whenever you make yourself available, that's why if you allow, oh, I know you're there. Not there. Let's look at it. Do you understand lesson one? So, you, anytime you yield yourself to God to use you to fulfill His will, the devil will steer up His agents. Lesson two. What's lesson two? Lesson two. Four reasons people envy. Four reasons. Turn when you're a man, Joe. Number one, it could be because they are not saved. Four reasons people envy. It could be because they are not saved. They have not allowed Jesus into their lives. They live as ordinary people. Number one reason, time when you say, man, you only get me, Koti Ba Christi. Koti Jowa Ye Fun Oloro. So, Oshin Big Bia Ye Rara. So it is not deep. To them, envy is part of They just say, I, I don't like you. And you'll be shocked. What, is, what did I do? How do I know this? Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 21. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21. Show us that scripture. People could envy because they are sinners. You know, I make sinners. Envy is nothing. It's part of life. They could see you doing anything. They would just hate you. Colossians chapter 1. Let's be fast. I don't have all the time. Colossians chapter 1. And verse 21. Shagada basen the levels. Let's wait for them to help us upload. Is there a problem? Thank you. Look at this. And you that were sometime alienated, which means you were enemies, and enemies in your mind. By what? By wicked works. 
yet now hath he reconciled. He said there was a time you were not part of him. There was a time you were an enemy of the cross by the wicked works. So, you know, we talk about envy as it's not right. In the kingdom of darkness, in the unbelieving world, envy is part of life. Second reason why people envy, it could be that they are still battling with the flesh. They are yet to totally surrender. Now, I'm talking about born again Christians now. Number two reason, this one is for born again Christians. Jesus Haven't you seen people that will say, ah, am I okay with me or me if you were left on Jesus? Am I okay? Am I okay with me or me if you were left on Jesus? Tell me about me. Every I want, I want to meet you. If you left on Jesus, my your left one, you go back there. There are people like that. They, they want, they, they have confessed Christ, but they have not submitted their faith the totality of their life. They have not surrendered. I remember in those days, if you want to, they want to make altar call, the usual song is what? I surrender. I surrender all. But this kind of view is I surrender, I surrender half. That could be the reason why some people are still envious. They are still holding on to certain natures. Not allowing the word of God to touch their, you know there are people like that, they come to church, no matter what the pastor is preaching, they set a, a fence. Pastor, don't go there. Pastor may not even know. Pastor may be preaching powerful, fireful message, but in their mind, they are blocking that aspect. Can the pastor say, and he said, they are I've sat with so many people like this before now, that when they come to see me, for counseling and they talk and I say come down especially young children when they tell me their story my father my father my father abandoned me my mommy ran away my father my father some people say I will never forgive him uh, then you are not born again because the scripture says forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us I told my story to some of them. That me too, I was, I was in primary two when my father left. I remember it was his girlfriend that came to the house one morning like this. Amuraton and Lok Command Children's School. At Femalo. My mom was getting ready. Our breakfast was ready. This woman just walked in. And you know, my mother said, ah, You have the audacity. I have heard that you are dating my husband outside. You have the audacity to come to our house. Have you been to television? And my dad was not at all. Um, you know, my mom, being an evil woman, my father came in. My father came in. My father came in. Saw his girlfriend on the floor. And stood up and told my mom. And said, see, hear me, hear me. It's not only because of you. That my mother circumcised me. If you know that you cannot cope, take your children and leave my house. Ah, it was like play, like play. And you know, a woman we want to, you know, at that point we want to show. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, all of you, enter the car, enter the car, enter the car, enter the car. We left without carrying anything, apart from our uniform. She drove around. She was driving and driving and driving and driving. God, I still remember that money. God pop off for us. Took us to school. After closing our, we couldn't return home. It would have a lot. We started sleeping from one of our friends' place to another friend's place, from another friend's place to another friend's place, from another friend's place to another friend's place. It was like that until we grew up. But when I was in SSU, my dad just came to Ibadan Boys High School to see me with a bag. That bag was really in those days. They call it Nigerian Army. School bag. Oh, my back, he came with the bag. I collected it. He put some money inside. So I got home and gave my mom. Oh, God. It's like thunder and fire met together. You the craze. 
upon everything your papa do for you. You see, car, you collect something from your hand. You know if you shout for them, make you call them, make you call them, bomo, bomo. make people gather. You can't collect back from your hand. Ah, she beats me like. But you know what? I was already born again. I was already attending fellowship. So I couldn't do what my mother did. What my mother said. I had to obey God. And am I communicating? It was not easy for me. Because I remember those days in primary school when other children's fathers come to greet, pick them, you know, at closing hour, buy ice creams for them. There was no father ready to come and pick me. But you know, what does it mean to be born again? It is to give your life to Christ. Not to share your life with Christ. You know, you can share your life with Christ. 50-50. Jesu. By 50. Came not by 50. I by 60. King by 40. But that's not what it means. To be born again is to give your life to him. Jesu. I will live my life according to the Bible. So I tried explaining to my mom. She got angry. I'm born again. I learned it from my Bible that whatever happened between my father and my mother does not consign me. It is their business. So I hear. Because if I had grown with my father too, he too would have told me all oh, several things about my mom. It's, it's his own story too, I will believe now. You are not here with me. Are you sure you are here? We are talking about why some Christians still have envy. The reason is because they have not totally submitted their flesh to Jesus. That was what Jesus said to Peter. I mean, to, uh, yeah, to Peter. Let's go to the Bible. John chapter 2. Verse 15. It's like this. The mic this side dropped. The sound here dropped. Media check for me. This side dropped somehow. John chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's have it on screen. And when he had made a scourge. No, no, sorry. Not to 21 15. Sorry. 21 15. Sorry. John chapter 21 verse 15. So when they had dined, maybe not in jail, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, what did he say? Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me more than this? You know why he asked this question? When Jesus was arrested and they saw that he was crucified, Peter said to his brothers, me, I go fishing. Uh-huh, me, Timophile, 23 uh, years ago. Mama Bitoa. I know where it is. I will go back to it. And beloved, he went back to his fishing business. He was busy. They were catching fish. They caught fish. It was where they were. You know, they, 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 they didn't catch at first. They were still struggling. And Jesus appeared. After he was risen, then he got to see Jinde. He stood by the sea and said, Friends, do you have any fish? They said, No, we don't have any. He said, Okay, why not cast your nets to the right side? They didn't know that it was Jesus. Then Peter cast his net to the right side. And when he wanted to try, ah, he couldn't pull. He said, Wait, oh, I remember this miracle. I know who can do this. Jesus, are you the one? Jesus said, I am the one. Peter, eh? Peter left the net. The Bible says he dived into the sea and started swimming towards Jesus. So after they finished eating, Jesus now said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this fish business? And what was his response? John 21. Loved me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He now said unto him, Peter, if you love me, do what? 
feed my lambs. Mark by Jamon. You too, have you submitted your flesh? Because you are, you are telling yourself, born again in me, you should be a land resolve in me. Ah, me, 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 not allowing the word of God to touch those areas. Please, anytime the word of God hits you in church, don't be offended with the pastor. Go and change. Go go back to your alone about four it here in church. Pastor was you was saying what that be going off again by it here later in. My be no see pastor. Hello, Lord Joko, Koshekini, Kurunu Puadani. Third reason why people envy. Third reason people envy. People envy when they lack the revelation of where God is taking them. Now, kini keta, idi keta telu mi shiman ni lara ni pe oye ibiti olono mulo koye. Koiti, koiti ri ifi hon ibiti olono fe munga lo. Sir, the plan of God for each person's life is unique. Just like fingerprint, imagine for God to have time to design our fingerprint that there are no two, no two fingerprint that is equal, that is the same. Even twin, every baby by any kind of teka, he can one the same like like. Now, do you now think that God that could have that time to design fingerprint that is not the same does not have a unique plan for you? That's why in your relationship with God, continue to ask God, what is your plan for me? If you gain access to the revelation of his what? Of his plan for your life. You won't envy anybody. When you understand where God is taking you. <laughs> I wrote here. By the virtue of your relationship with God, you are supposed to gain access to the revelation of his purpose for your life. Are we still struggling with the, the, uh, the two tweeters of these things? Please talk to me about it after the service. If it's for us to get new ones, let's go and get it. Because I, won't, I wasn't even aware that it was removed. By, by the virtue of your relationship with God, you are supposed to gain access to the revelation of his purpose for your life. By virtue of relationship. Sheri to ba je pe oye ohun ti Olorun fe se pelu Judah oye Judah ni ko ni ba won Jowu Joseph to ba je ke oye nti Olorun fe fi leve se awon levi se oye won ni won ni jonu Jowu Joseph because inu iran Judah ni Jesus wa inu iran leve ni Moses wa sa here I didn't hear your voice. Now look at this. Let's confirm it. In Acts chapter 19, uh, chapter 9, sorry, Acts 9, 15 and 16. Acts 9, 15 and 16. By do you know that by, by virtue of relationship, Saul already knew what God wanted to do with him. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is my what? He is my chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. He is my chosen vessel, verse 16. He is my chosen vessel, verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I will show him. I 
Alonu mi manti o she. Jesu mi manti o she. E mi mi ma manti o she o. Taye mi o fidara. He knows it. Number four. Fourth reason why people envy. Fourth reason why people envy. Can I go on? People envy when they do not understand their role in God's plans and his reward system. Hmm. People envy when they do not understand their role in God's plan and his reward system. And when you you to reward Listen, go and read that 11th hour miracle God uh, 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 in, in Matthew. The Bible says Jesus shared a parable. He said the, the owner of the vineyard went out to look for workers. He went out very early in the morning to go look for workers. He saw workers very early in the morning. They negotiated. How much are you going to collect? They said, I'm going to collect, for instance, let me use today's language, 100,000 now. 100,000, no problem. He went out again three hours after. How much are you going to collect? Those ones say 100,000, no problem. He went out six hours after. How much are you going to collect? One hour. He went, uh, 100,000. He now went out around one hour to the end of the close of the day. That's 5 p.m. He now told them, come and work with me. Kuban will negotiate. He now said to one, to the first one, she be in the mukokok ba one be ni egba hundred thousand. Tajo agree. Eyi keji she be in line none mukba in egba hundred thousand. Tajo agree. Eyi keta she be minon mukba in egba hundred thousand. Tajo agree. I want a keni chiu basoro rara owa phone ni hundred thousand. Ah, I want la koko wani sa ikani yo. I want in she she lata aro. I yete fa one to she she de non le phone wa. You know what he said? He said what is your own? Why will you be angry with my generosity? What is your business in the way I distribute? Is it not what I agree with you I gave you? Yes. If you understand God's reward system, you won't envy anybody. Because God may reward us in different ways, but his reward is the same. Am I communicating? <laughs> so that's why. Don't envy anyone if you understand the way God operates. Lesson three and I'll close. Maybe God is about to give you a new phone. <laughs> Once he just breaks it, you hold him. Lesson three. How to undo envious people. Let's take that as lesson three. How do you undo them? Let's look at verse uh, 46 of that Acts 13. Verse 46. Acts 13, 46. Acts 13, 46. I want us to read together. One. Is our own speaker working? One, two, and let's go. Then Paul and Barnabas did what? Wask bold. Wait for me. Listen. Do not allow it create fear in you. Some people say, hey, because of what they are saying, because of what they are saying, uh, 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 let me go and who, uh, 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 because of what they are saying, because of what? Do not allow what they say create fear in you. Ah, ah, they said I've started, I've started. What do I do? Emergency can come out. It's a lie. Do more. I wrote here, yield yourself more for God to use you for more exploit. Some of you have allowed the fear of envious people to silence you.
Pastor, you don't understand. They have started envying me. If you know what they are saying about me, so because of what they have said, I've decided to go low. May you not go low. Show me that. Show me that same scripture. The Bible says they wask bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. They wask bold. The more they envy, the more you must keep going forward. Don't ever allow the voice of envy make you go hide. Look at verse for seven. Look at verse for seven. Look at verse for seven. Seven for seven for seven. Look at it. He said, "For as, as for." For so had the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. I have set thee a light. Don't let the voice of envious people silence you. Don't let the voice of envious people silence you. Are you here? Hey, I don't know, sir. I don't know how they will feel that you pass exam. You don't know how they will feel. Let them feel anything. One of the men whose voice I respect so much, God's servant, is an apostle. He said, when his son finished serving, they now, they, uh, no, when they, they finished university, they now posted them to go and serve in a place in the north. So all of them, all of them in their school now team up together to charter a bus to move them from their school to the north. He said he had it. He called his son. You want to follow them with a the bus? No. You are my own son. I've bought a ticket for you. You are going to go by flight. He said he now said, the son now says, sir, how will my friends feel? He said, he said, tell them that it is not your fault that you are my son. To these Christians, we have so much allowed the spirit of fear. And because of fear, we don't want to do exploit again. Don't forget, Paul and Barnabas did what? Wask bold. How do you undo envious people? Number two, verse 50 and 51. Let's read verse 50 and verse 51. Verse 50 and verse 51. Verse 50 and verse 51. Can you see? He said, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and did what? And expelled them. Out of their coast. Only one. Now, what's the second point? Let the Spirit of God instruct you on what to do next. Be bold, but let the Spirit of God instruct you. There are times that God will lead you to break free from some relationships. When envy sets into a point, allow God. Am I communicating? You know why I won't say run away? Because in 1 Corinthians 16, 8 to 10, Paul said a door of effectual service have opened unto me in Ephesus, but I will tarry. The adversary is there, but I will tarry. There's, there, he said there's great adversary here, but I will stay. That's why it was the Spirit of God that allowed them to leave that land. But when he got to Corinth, the Spirit of God says, stay there. The Lord will help you. The Lord will strengthen you. Have you learned something this morning? I didn't hear you. Are you sure you have learned something this morning? How should you handle envious people? What's number one? Continue to ask bold. Don't stop excelling. Don't let their voice make you feel you should stop the things that makes them envy you. 
Say you are calling this. Hey, Jema, Emma, Marumi. You are better. You should be in the corner. Let me, let me, let me. I want to come binu. Ask more bold. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord will give you victory. And don't forget, so I have told you, so that you will not become an agent in the hands of the devil too, as a child of God. Deal with your flesh. Do not allow your flesh to take hold of you. Let's bow down our heads. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Let's pray that the Lord will help us. Say, Lord, help me. I yield myself. I surrender completely, totally to you. Have your way in my life. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke the works of the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. I rebuke the work of the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Now rebuke every spirit of fear of envious people. I, I rebuke the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus. From my heart. I rebuke that spirit of fear. I begin to walk in boldness. I begin to do great exploit. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? I begin to do great exploit in the name of Jesus. I begin to do great exploit from now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Let's be on our feet. I want to pray for you. And it leads you before the next service. We start by next service starts by 20 after 10.